Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning so today we are going to talk about Eastern European cinema, another very interesting part of the world where uh, renowned cinema has been made for uh, over several decades. Uh, here are some of the major players here. Um, we will be talking about the early cinema, Alexander Ford's, one of the earliest film by Alexander Ford in Poland. So, uh, today we will be referring to Eastern European cinema with particular reference to Polish and Czechoslovakian cinema. So, People of the Vistula, one of the earliest films uh, that came out from um, uh, Poland and then um, we will also talk about uh, another great Polish filmmaker Andrzej Wajda and his film Ashes and Diamonds. Also Christoph Kieslowski who I am sure you are very, very well aware of this film director. He has made some of the greatest films in recent times, the Three Color Trilogy, The Double Life of Veronique and Decalogue. We will also talk about, I will I'll also refer to some great film actors from that part of the world and then uh, cinema from Czechoslovakia and uh, with a special reference to uh, a relatively recent film called Kolya, okay, directed by Ian Jorek, other uh, great uh, cinema film directors from uh, Czechoslovakia are the names are written over the board, Ivan Passer, Jiri Menzel and Milos Forman. So, welcome friends to uh, a brief introduction to Eastern European cinema. The first studio built in Poland was in Warsaw in 1920. In 1929, a few experimental avant-garde filmmakers started a society called START, S-T-A-R-T. It has, uh, it is uh, an abbreviation for uh, film society. One of the most well-known figures of this time was Alexander Ford, who made films such as uh, People of uh, the Vistula and the Street Legion. His films, particularly made in the 30s, had a strong social and political content. During the Second World War, filmmaking was allowed in countries under German occupation, except Poland, because Polish cinema was getting increasingly political and um, the occupants were not too happy about it. So, there were several restrictions on Polish cinema. The ravages of the war forced the film industry to start from the scratch and most films of the post-war period dealt with the Nazi regime, uh, uh, its operation, uh, the holocaust that the country had suffered and the heroes of the resistance period. Now, Alexander Ford's Border Street is a 1948 film which is a recreation of the doomed Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, in which a small but courageous and heroic band of Jews herded into a ghetto by German occupation forces chose to resist the Nazis rather than to face deportation to Auschwitz. The film was banned in Poland as it depicted Jews rather than communists as the heroes of anti-German struggle. Ford's color film and it is one of the earliest uh, Polish film in color, Five Boys from Baska Street focused on juvenile delin delinquency. The great Andre Wajda assisted him on this film. Soon Andre Wajda was so, uh, to become uh, one of the greatest ever Polish film directors. Wajda's great trilogy includes A Generation, Canal and Ashes and Diamonds a 1958 film which is based on a novel by Jerry Andrzejewski. The film is set in the beginning of May 1945 
and the second world war is nearly over we know the dates of the second world war so 1939 to 45 and closing of the second world war now eastern europe i am giving you the political background backdrop of the film eastern europe has been liberated by the red army and poland is in the process of uh, setting up a new civil society now the action of ashes and diamond involves a unit of the home army the largest of all polish underground movements this unit fomented or instigated the warsaw uprising of 1944 and was fiercely anti soviet the unit had been ordered to assassinate a top communist official the task is given to uh, a young student uh, who has recently passed out of the university Maggie, uh, he sh to shoot the communist official so the entire story focuses on his attempts to kill the official and in turn how he is shot dead by a militia patrol so while the novel takes place over a period of four days the film's action takes place within 48 hours Marcier and a colleague they rent rooms in a hotel and reflect about the days of the Warsaw uprising and uh, reminisce how their lives have been full of poverty, war, struggle and meaningless, senseless suffering. Uh, in the same hotel, Marseille meets and falls in love with a waitress. All this time during the night, a wild party goes on in the hotel where celebrations are on um, are going on and they are awaiting peace and the mayor's this so called the communist officials appointment as a minister and this is what the story is all about so uh, complete story or uh, action takes place in 48 hours uh, very introverted very stylized kind of a film the protagonist of the film Marcia, the actor became an overnight sensation he was also called the James Dean of Poland the film is also renowned for its black and white cinematography here is a scene from Ashes and Diamonds Polish cinema flourished during the 50s and 60s with directors such as Andrzej Munch, um, Wojciech Hess and Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski, of course, um, all of us are uh, familiar with Roman Polanski. We have already referred to and see, watched his film Two Men and a Wardrobe, which was the movie which he made in Poland while he was still in Poland. And, uh, his Hollywood successes include Rosemary's Baby, Chinatown and more recently The Pianist. After 1968, political repression and censorship film industry had limited freedom and the cinema suffered during this period. The breakup of communism was matched by the disintegration of the cultural industry. Film was one of the victims or cultural victims in Eastern Europe countries such as Czech Republic, Poland and Russia. Once reconstructed started, Polish cinema also saw or witnessed a rapid growth and one of the foremost names here is Krzysztof Kieslowski. He represents the cinema of moral unrest in Polish cinema. Political commitment forms or uh, exists at the core of his films and as a result two of his fil films were banned by the Polish government. One film, Blind Chance, which examines the effect of randomness of fate on the life of a medical student and the other film, No End, involves the ghost of a dead lawyer watching his family survive without him. So, these two films were banned. However, these films are followed by Decalogue in which Kieslowski received, inter uh, for which Kieslowski int uh, received international acclaim and uh, the film follows the pattern of Ten Commandments. His 1988 film, a short film about killing is an anti-capital punishment film which shows authorized killing is as disturbing as the murder of a taxi driver by a young hooligan. After the fall of communism, Kieslowski chose to work in France where he directed The Double Life of Veronique and the Three Color Trilogy. The Three Color Trilogy 
is uh, Kislowski's biggest international film uh, uh, of all times and his also biggest success most well and most well received and most renowned movie. It featured uh, and glamorous international stars such as Juliette Binoche, Julie Delpy and Irene Jacob, uh, some of whom had already worked with Kislowski in his earlier films. The films are three colors, blue, um, white and red. Now, um, the color scheme is very clear, it is in the manner of the French flag and is structured around the themes of the French Republic that is liberty, equality and fraternity that is brotherhood. The real themes of course include um, ambiguities regarding love, deceit, the way we betray each other, voyeurism and men's fear and loathing of women that is a strong theme that exists through the three films. Of course, Kislowski being who he is a very strongly, uh, very strong politically motivated director, he is also included in national and self identities and one strong theme that runs through these films is how we throw away everything that we have including our identities and then attempt to start our lives from a scratch. So, this is another recurrent motif. The Three Color Trilogy is about entirely different people in different cities, though there are little overlapping and uh, very discomforting touches in which we encounter the leading character of one film in cameo in another. At one level, we find the director's obsession with the themes of fate and chance. Now, uh, actors doing cameos, characters doing cameos uh, in such uh, kinds of films, you know, um, films that uh, uh, a part or the, the films that complement one another and then uh, act characters coming from hopping from one film to another is nothing new. Even in our films we have been seeing of late when cinema is getting some film directors are um, illustrating influences of European fil uh, filmmakers. So, we can see that this trend is also taking place in our cinema. So, blue which is stars Juliette Binoche was viewed as extremely exquisite piece of work, white which is set mostly in Poland and it features Julie Delpy was a comic episode and red it features two European stars Irene Jacob and the French cinema hero Jean Louis Trintignant. Uh, so, this film was considered as red was considered as one of the as uh, by many experts as the best of all the three trilogy. This is Jean Louis Trintignant, he is also the actor who famously starred in Bartolucci's The Conformist. So, um, coming from Poland to Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia became an independent nation in 1918 and has faced competition from German and US films since then. Like most film industries, US has been a constant threat and challenge. We have also done recently um, Canadian cinema and we know that how Canadian cinema has never been able to come out of the shadows of the American film industry. So, so similarly, European cinema too suffers the threat of um, strong and uh, strongly uh, and aggressively marketed and produced big budgeted Hollywood films. In 1933, the Barendorf studios opened in Prague. During the war, the Germans took it over which interrupted any progress in the industry. After the war, the National Film School was set up in Prague and witnessed the emergence of directors such as Ivan Passer, Jiri Menzel and uh, Milos Forman. Ian Kader's The Shop on the High Street was the first Zach film to win a foreign film Oscar. This was followed by Manzel's 1966 closely observed trains. The Russian invasion of 1968 
ended the exciting period of activity in film industry in Czechoslovakia. Many directors such as Milos Forman left for the US and then we also know that uh, Forman directed the well received One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson in America. After the disintegration of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia in 93, 1993, the film industries have developed their distinct voices. The hostility towards the Russians is dealt with in the 1996 film Kolya, directed by Ayan Juarek. Kolya, the film is set in 1988 Prague. The protagonist is the 55 years old person. Francisca Luaka, a cellist who used to play with the state symphony orchestra, but uh, because of sub, some sub, uh, subversive action, he ends up losing his job and uh, now he is reduced to playing mournful music at funerals. So, come down, a big let down for the great artist. Now, um, he needs money and uh, he enters a marriage of convenience with uh, a Russian woman who needs the Czechoslovakian citizenship. So, this is a matrimonial arrangement of convenience in exchange for money. Since the bride wants a Czechoslovak citizenship, soon after the wedding, the woman leaves for West Germany, but Luka is left with her five year old son Kolya. Now, Kolya becomes Luka's responsibility and soon they develop affection for each other. Now, this is interesting, Luca who has never known responsibility and Kolya who has never known a father, they find something in each other. The cellist now turns into a responsible father and all this while the world around them is changing. So, again a strong politically, uh, political content at the core of the film, but it is done in extremely sensitive and gentle manner. So, while the world is changing, the communist dictatorship is on the verge of collapse. Um, these two people, these two lonesome people form forge a bond. The film also um, because of its sentimentality reminded the audience of Charlie Chaplin's The Kid and it won a um, huge amount of international acclaim and won the Oscar for best foreign language film. The film's success of course is attributed to its aesthetic content, warm heartedness and also its great attention to details. Here is a scene from Kolya. So, thank you very much. We will meet um, and we will continue with our exploration of international cinema.